Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today we're talking about the ENFP personality type and why ENFPs like to disagree, why ENFPs are sometimes perceived as contrarians and as rebels, and how we can learn to rethink about this mindset and this important mindset and to understand its functions and how to manage it. And I want you to notice as an ENFP yourself, it's okay to change your mind and it's okay to have different opinions and it's okay to see options and to have alternatives. It is in fact your superpower and without it what would you really be? In fact, in fact ENFPs are so impressively gifted when it comes to thinking of options and ways to do things differently. And it, their ability is usually what saves the day of all strategists, of all visionaries, usually there is always some kind of ENFP sitting in the backseat that can often think of great ways to implement these visions. Every moment they can think of a new way to implement it, every way they can think of a new way to adjust to a new situation, to everything that is constantly changing around us. And that is how ideas stay relevant. I think ENFPs serve the purpose of keeping organizations and ideas relevant. You know, whatever isn't changing is dying. And that's one way of understanding it. But when ENFPs express their ideas and share it with other people, they can sometimes be perceived as contrarians. They always have a different idea. There is always a different opinion. There is always another way to do it. And people may have gone attached to their old ways. People in different organizations may have gone stale. They don't want to hear new ideas. They are not open to new feedback. They believe that, sure, we can change things once in a while, but after a while we should stop, right? If we found a good way to do something, we should just keep doing it that way, right? And the ENFP that will always come up with suggestions and alternatives in this organization may sometimes be perceived as a contrarian. And I think a lot of INTPs, ENTPs and INFPs may share this. And here a lot of ENFPs uh, either hold back too much, they lock themselves down, they tell themselves, no, I shouldn't say that, no, I shouldn't think that. No, I should probably just do what, uh, stick to what everyone else thought. Or ENFPs may become, uh, in a way, too rushed. And uh, here is the thing, I, as an ENFP, it's not necessarily that you always want to change things. It's not always that you always want every idea that you have to happen. You don't necessarily like all ideas you have, but you like the freedom to express your ideas. You want to be able to speak your mind and to, when you see something, call it out and show people what it is. You want to bring options to the table, just so people know. And even if people don't like these new options, at least they should know they exist. And then if they don't like it, they can always choose a different outcome in them. That's an EFP that's important to remember. We believe sometimes that just because ENFPs have ideas, we must always either do what they say or ignore it or shut the idea down from being expressed at all. But often ideas can just bring things to the table and it can also keep us informed about what's going on. And here's another thing. ENFPs can sometimes be seen as the bearers of bad news when they are bringing up and showing people problems and anticipating issues with a new idea or with a new project. So imagine this, an organization has a project in mind or a vision they've set to the table. The ENFP goes into NP mode and starts running through all patterns and options in this plan. Okay, that project happens. Five steps later, so do we have enough of those resources? Are everyone informed? Do every, is everyone does everyone understand the plan correctly? What if that person didn't get it? What if uh, Eva or Frank that's sitting in the corner there misunderstood the plan? Did everyone get it down correctly? The ENFP goes into this, goes through all these steps. You know, there's to an ENFP's mind, there are steps to everything. There's millions and millions of steps, millions and millions of doors. Everything is following patterns. Chains of events are following on top of each other's. So as an ENFP, it's also that you can see that, okay, great idea. 
and then we get to point A, and that's also going to work. And then we get to point B, and that's also going to work. But then we get to point C, and that's not going to work. So are people aware of C? And here, I think often the abstract nature of the ENFP can be difficult for certain types. It can be that other types can't follow along in this chain of events. They don't know that you're already at uh, option D because they're still at option A. But what we have to remember here is while it can seem redundant or while it can seem like they're going too fast or like we should focus on point A for now, while we're sitting here and discussing this project, while we're sitting here considering this project, we need to at least be aware of the entire chain. We need some people in the group that know this chain exists and that can see or at least see a way this plan could unfold if it's no if there is no feasible way this plan could unfold if there are no steps to getting from point a to where the product is need, meant to go it's not a good plan so we have to remember why we need np why we need intuitive and perceiving types why we need people that can perceive options and why we need extroverted and intuitive types that can see patterns and possibilities we need these types because they can see very quickly if a vision is going to succeed or if it's going to fail. ENFPs are not necessarily the people that have great vision and the reason is not because they are incapable of having visions but it is because they are very quick at shooting down a vision or noticing an alternative course of action to the vision they had. So an ENFP might have a vision but the thing is, and this is true for all MPs, most MPs don't stick to or hold on to a vision for a long time. And that's because the world is always changing. There are things happening around us. And as an ENFP, it's more important and more fun to stay up to date with these changes and to make sure you're always choosing a good course of action in the moment that you're always going for and exploring a pattern or possibility. And uh, there are some things that keep ENFPs from getting very committed to a vision. First, of course they see alternatives. But second, it's something else. And that is that the ENFP prefers to explore than to deep dive. And this is where an INFP or an INTP might differ, you know, where an INFP or an INTP can theorize and can start the going through and if this vision was true and if we would follow this vision, it would look like that and maybe we could do it like that and that could happen. The INFP prefers to go, so how do we apply this theory? So ENFPs, uh, when they get into the MTI, they usually have a completely different mindset than INFPs and INTPs. ENFPs, they read up on the MTI and then they see a theory about the uh, extroverted intuition and then they test it on their friends and family members. And then they test it on their animals and their pets. They test it, theories. They see, did it work on that guy? Yes. Did it work on that guy? No. Okay. <laughs> ENFPs are the people that see how to implement the theory. Uh, they can take abstract, very, very abstract statements about people and they can bring it down to concrete situations in life like what people choose for their breakfast or what people like to wear or what people like to do on the lunch table while they're having conversations with one another. So they are having these ideas and this feedback all the time, seeing how to apply or implement an idea or a theory. And that's another important thing to realize. A lot of organizations are organizations that sit down and talk about the theory or a vision or a prospect or a project. And they sit there and they go and they, bring, they like imagine, they visualize, they sit down, they think about it. But ENFP, not necessarily so. The ENFP sits down, listens for five minutes, starts to get it down, wants to go try it out, wants to see how to understand the project, wants to ask questions, wants to discuss it with other people, wants to juggle and see, okay, so if we would do it, who would do it, who would do what, what would uh, I do, what should uh, we think about, what do we need to complete it? So there's also the practical aspect and I think 
a lot of organizations may perceive the ENFP as um, contrarian or they might perceive them as uh, anti in a sense just because a lot of organizations prefer to just sit down and think about it where the ENFP wants to discuss it and the discussion part is uh, where extroverts and introverts collide a little bit and here's the thing as an introverted and intuitive type such as myself it's easy to place personal pride to the ideas you have it's easy to think it's my idea my thought I've sat and thought about this for a long time so you become personally invested to it but as an extroverted intuitive it is our idea so we should discuss it together we should talk about it and see what everyone th thinks about it and we should all voice our criticisms and our positive feedback about it and so then we can make a decision if we like it or not but then as an ENFP when you start doing that what you might notice is the introverted intuitives they get sensitive and they get like but my idea but it was my idea and that's one thing first as an ENFP you feel you have to dig it out of people people start sharing something small and you want of course as an ENFP you're not happy with that small mouthpiece of information you want it all so you start having to dig it up okay so what was all of it let's get out of it out in the open okay everyone now it's out now we understand the idea the person here has and the introvert intuitive with the idea he sits there now and suddenly feels very naked because suddenly everyone's looking at his idea and uh, going like hmm I don't know and uh, it's even more sensitive then because uh, suddenly everyone is discussing the idea and uh, it feels like they're not just discussing the idea they're discussing the extension of the idea you so it's something very private to an introvert intuitive but to an extrovert intuitive it's something to share and discuss that's a very important difference one of the core biggest conflicts between extroverts and introverts is that one of territory but as an enfp it's also important to recognize that uh, people need time to think an idea through and uh, when they share it too early, often what they share is not good enough. It's like picking up a bo an egg out of the water before it has time to get hard enough. <laughs> okay, as a vegan, this is a very difficult example. Uh, it's like uh, basically underprepared food. So what's happening is... Uh, Sometimes extroverted intuitives have a tendency to push things out of people that are not ready to share it and they might be ready to say that yeah I've started cooking an egg or I've started making something but that does not necessarily mean that they are ready. So give people time and also um, try to challenge the territory softly you know there's something like poking and treading and like pushing a little bit and then seeing okay maybe not yet is it ready yet okay is it ready yet okay but how about now then and that's often how an ENFP learns to deal with it and uh, I have to say my girlfriend is an expert in this matter uh, what is the other important thing it's uh, the other important thing is uh, learning to express your crazy in a sense really it's uh, far too many NFPs hold themselves back and uh, they hold themselves back from having other opinions and having alternatives and showing options and they hold themselves back from expressing ideas and uh, discussing new information and discussing possibilities and showing people patterns and showing people opportunities you know so many people around us are sitting here absolutely stuck in their creative process nowhere to go nowhere to get uh, no idea how to get to the next point 
And they're sitting there completely for no reason while there are tons of extrovert intuitives out there that could have help to offer. Often if I'm stuck, the first thing I do is I will reach out to an extroverted intuitive and I will share my ideas and that's when the extrovert intuitive goes into hmm, hmm. So that reminds me of yesterday while I was talking to my aunt or hmm. But then tomorrow maybe we could check that out or maybe we could go out and try that. Extroverted intuitives free up blocks and they show when a vision needs a step-by-step -step plan, when there is needs a chain of events to fulfill an idea, when there are criteria that are necessary to succeed in an abstract prospect. ENFPs have options, but too many are too afraid to speak of these options because first they don't really dare to challenge other people's ideas. They are afraid of overstepping boundaries. They are afraid of being seen as contrarian or as too crazy or too alternative. Or they are afraid of uh, disturbing the process. And basically that is why so many projects and so many organizations crash and burn. Because there is no contingency plan, there is no backup plan, there are no alternatives when it falls, falls apart. And the ENFP knew it from the beginning, but couldn't really tell anybody because, uh, yeah, nobody f wanted to listen. Have you as an ENFP had any experiences with this? Feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching and if you feel like and other people could relate to this, feel free to share it with them as well. Thank you all for tuning in and I hope to see you all in the next video.